Hi all. In this, the last of the videos on limestone, we're going to look at our second set of limestone features, which are our underground features. Now the features we're going to look at, uh, rather obviously, all form underground, and they are caverns, stalactites and stalagmites, and pillars. Now these features owe their formation due to the porous nature of limestone and how readily it will dissolve in NABK acid and notably carbonic acid in rain. Now to start with caverns, we've got an area of limestone and we get a lot of rain obviously penetrates down through the rock following swallow holes, the joints and bedding planes and it builds up and it starts to dissolve a lot of the limestone rock as we know that it does. Now when we've got areas underground where perhaps we have a, a large group of joints that come together or the limestone butts up against some impermeable rock, we get large builds up of water. And as this water builds up, it can erode larger and larger areas and it will create caverns. So we've got a lot of water builds up and then we can get, you know, uh, climatic changes, etc. It might lower the kind of natural level that water sits at underground, which is called the water table. And that then results in us having these large voids forming underground or caverns. Now what can happen sometimes is that these caverns can become large enough that the roofs are unsupported and they can collapse and they, that can actually make the caverns a little larger again. Now inside these caverns, the this water, this rainwater that we have that is very, very heavily laden with limestone, there's a lot of limestone dissolved in the water. So we need to remember that this water has fallen out of the sky's rain, travelled through the joints, the bedding planes of the limestone, and as it goes through that, it's dissolving the limestone the whole time. You know, it's working by solution, and it's picking up little bits of limestone as it goes. So eventually it's going to meet a cavern, and it kind of just, you know, it gathers along the roof of the cavern, this water, and some of it is going to drip off the roof, and some of it is going to evaporate off. Now, regardless of what happens, whether it evaporates or it drips off the roof, it's going to leave behind a tiny, tiny amount of limestone. And this tiny, tiny amount of limestone is going to be left behind, and then we're going to have another drip, and another, and another, and another. And it adds a tiny, tiny amount of limestone every single time. And then after hundreds, thousands of years, we form this large icicle shape of rock, which we refer to as a stalactite. Now what we can also have, on the floor of this cavern, these drips are going to hit the ground, obviously. And as they hit the ground and they splash, they leave behind another tiny deposit of limestone. And this builds up and up and up. Again, hundreds, thousands of years of building up these tiny, tiny little limestone deposits. And eventually it's going to form basically the mirror image of our stalactite. We're going to get a stalagmite, which is like a big icicle rising up off the floor of the cave. Now sometimes what can happen is that a stalactite and a stalagmite, they form directly, you know, one above the other for so long that they eventually just merge together. The limestone deposits just keep dropping and keep dropping and eventually we get a pillar that forms instead. Now a kind of a top tip for remembering this is one of the things that people very commonly confuse when they're talking about these underground features, is stalactites and stalagmites, which is which? Which one comes from the roof of the cave? Which one comes from the bottom? Now, uh, an easy way that I remember it is stalactite has got a C in it for ceiling, and stalagmite has got a G in it for ground. You know, there are a couple of other ways to remember it, but that's the one that I find works quite well for me. Okay, now this marks the end of our limestone features. And remember that... The important things with these is that they form underground, they owe their formation to the porous nature of limestone, and the fact that rainwater, or weak carbonic acid, will readily dissolve limestone, and that means it can take it further underground, and we can have deposits of it form like our stalactites and stalagmites, or even our pillars. Now, as I say, this is the end of the videos on the limestone topic, but it's not the end of the limestone topic itself. The next thing that we're going to be moving on to is a case study of a limestone area in the UK, which will be the Yorkshire Dales National Park, 
and we'll discuss that more in the lessons to come. And I'll catch up with you guys later.